everybody, and welcome to The Garage, the Court of Public Opinion. Peter Clayton's behind the camera. I'm Jeremy Cordo, and we're in session with another Court of Public Opinion. Everyone, and I don't think there is an exception, everyone from time to time has a bad back. Lots of bad back stories. I think it comes from the fact that maybe we're not meant to be on our hind legs. Maybe we are probably meant to be uh, walking around dragging our knuckles on, on four. <laughs> that, anyway, the reason I bring it up, uh, Professor Mark Hancock from Sydney University Health Sciences Department, he has discovered a remarkably simple remedy. I wish I had known about it last week. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will hopefully have him on the program on uh, Friday to tell us. So if you know anyone who's got a bad back or you have a bad back, the professor will tell us how to fix it simply and quickly. Uh, when you see a commercial for an electric car, and there are lots of them, oh, they're keen to sell them, oh... Well, they are being dumped in Australia, hand over fist. But when you see one of those commercials, ask yourself, what is the problem they're trying to fix? And what does buying an electric car do to fix it? And, and, and why should you pay for all this nonsense? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have more to say about electric cars. The Liberals' nuclear power policy is arguably right. I don't know what you think, but I think we should be talking about it, debating it. Lots of unanswered questions coming from their policy. The theory being, I understand, uh, that um, Peter Dutton says, we'll feed out the policy in bite-sized pieces. We won't swamp the place with too much information. I don't think that's a good idea. We can handle it. We can, most importantly, handle the truth. And I'll remind Peter Dutton of this. He was the man who quite correctly said of the voice at the time of the referendum. He said of the voice, if you don't know, vote no. Well, so we're just thousands of unanswered questions. Don't have unanswered questions. Peter Dutton must sell the idea of atomic power. It's not a bogeyman. It is safe. It's logical. It will save us money and will boost the GDP of this country considerably. It will improve our competitiveness. It will create jobs. But so far, all we have is the information that there, are, there will be seven nuclear sites around Australia on existing coal-fired power stations. Well, that's just, that makes perfect sense. You're making use of the infrastructure around. The state governments and the CFMEU, well, they may have different ideas about all of this. You can bet they will. But it is a very significant political gamble for Peter Dutton. No costing, no timing. Hmm. Okay, we have uranium. And we have coal, abundantly. And I think one is obliged to use what the good Lord has given you. We are the most energy-rich country in the world we are a sort of a Saudi Arabia. Coal and gas and uranium. The lefties of this world want us to turn our backs on opportunity and prosperity. Like those demonstrators, you know, the vandals, the chaos, chucking red paint around, tearing down statues. Now, even now they're deciding that milk it's one of those evil colonial things. I can't believe these people. The just say no to oil brigade. All those people. They have no truth, no logic, nothing. Just lefties who are probably all 
on welfare, no jobs, they make no contribution to society. They wish to, I think, just bring society to its knees. At this they are doing a pretty good job. You can expect a huge anti-nuclear campaign on the ABC. It's already started. The ABC is where we should be getting intelligent analysis. But like their coverage of the voice referendum, we will get a stacked deck. What would you expect? Kim Williams, the chairman of the ABC, was speaking in Melbourne on Wednesday, Wednesday night last week, about the great job the ABC was doing and why it deserves more money. Deserves more money? It gets over a billion dollars a year. Anyone who saw Sarah Ferguson's interview with uh, Ted O'Brien, well, it wasn't an interview. She was, she was badgering him. It was just a, a blatant left-wing rant on her part. Look, there was a time, I can remember it, there was a time when the ABC was a beacon of everything it should be. It was a meritocracy. This was back in the days of Sir Charles Moses and Sir Talbot Duck Manton. And pre-Gough Whitlam. Oh, pre-Gough Whitlam, absolutely. Yeah, and of course Kim Williams is married to Gough Whitlam's daughter. Labour Party uh, royalty. The ABC back in the day employed only the best of the best. They were elitist, blatantly, unashamedly. Today, it seems just the left wing is employed. No attempt to get any balance or excellence. And the proof of the pudding is in the eating. You see, in every city in Australia, there are close to 25 stations and outlets, online, TV, radio, some of which have a rating as low as an asterisk or a one, <laughs> sometimes a two, hardly registering on the Richter scale. But what they do is they add them all up together. So you, they've got a rating of 25. We rate very well. No, <laughs> that's rubbish. That's not how it works. Here in Adelaide, you can see it very clearly. You can see it as clear as day. We don't have a successful talk radio station on the commercial band, unlike most cities in Australia. So the way was clear for the ABC to be the number one station in the state. In other words, the audience is there, but there is nowhere for it to go. There isn't a, a 3AW, a 2GB, a 4BC, a 6PR. Now that is largely why we started JeremyCordo.com. And slowly, using word of mouth, we are building it up, little by little by little by little. We don't have any big advertising campaign or anything. There is certainly a, a niche, an opportunity for talk radio, opinion. You know, not one-sided. Admittedly, I have my opinions, but I, I welcome and I talk to people with all kinds of opinions. I'll bet you won't hear this guy on the ABC. A man with great knowledge and experience. His name is Dr. Addy Patterson. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was the former head of ANSTO. ANSTO, the authority on all things nuclear. He says, there is not an ounce of credibility in Labour's position on nuclear power. As I say, you're not going to hear this man on the ABC. But you will, hopefully, hear him Friday at the dining room table, jeremycordo.com, 9 to 12. Uh, I haven't locked it in yet, but... Um, I'm chasing him like crazy. Uh, what he had to say on the subject was absolutely eye-opening, riveting. A man of 
great intellect and knowledge. Um, a man like Ian Plymer, Professor Plymer. We are so fortunate to have some really knowledgeable, great people to speak on just about any subject you can think of. South Australia's Premier, uh, Peter Malinowskis, he dipped his oar in the water over this whole thing. He says that he would support nuclear if it wasn't more expensive. Then why does he support renewables when they are demonstrably proven to be more expensive? Makes no sense. We've got coal and we send it to China. We sell it to China. We export to other people the benefit of our coal. But we're not allowed to use it ourselves. What do, what do these people think the Chinese are doing with our coal? <laughs> are they sort of burning it in a different atmosphere or something? <laughs> it's bizarre. Stone Age, absolute Stone Age nonsense. Just let me <clears throat> remind you about this lovely award that one of our sponsors got, which was scooping the pool to become in South Australia, in the east of our wonderful city, the Rising Sun Best Pub. Best pub and bar title. The Rising Sun Inn in Norwood has scooped up the best pub and bar title. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm just so chuffed that their sort of excellence is being universally recognised and talked about because there's nothing more successful. Su nothing succeeds like success. And the Rising Sun Inn, thanks to Jackie and thanks to Grant, have become a great success story. It is a very old inn, probably the oldest. I don't think it's ever been anything else but an inn. Um, it's in Norwood. There are five different areas. Most have open fires. A beautiful, warm, cosy pub with a wonderful bar, fantastic kitchen, great menu, uh, whether you're having a quiet romantic dinner or you're having something a, a lot more celebratory and maybe, I don't know, a, a, a wedding reception or a, a product launch or anything at all. Have a talk to Grant on 08, that's if you're out of town, but all you really need is this number, 8333-0721. The Rising Sun Inn. Have a talk to Grant. And we are so proud to have him and that lovely, lovely restaurant and inn and bar as a sponsor. Now here is something else. I might just leave you with this. Apart from population, which I think Pete agrees with me on this, problems facing the world Population is a big one, because we're very messy, humankind, very messy. We make a lot of mess. But apart from population, the biggest controllable environmental problem is plastics. And I want to continue talking about this, because you've got to keep it up there in the public mind. Why don't the eco-warriors the Extinction Rebellion people, the Just Say No to Oil people, the Free Palestine crowd, why don't they come out and protest against the plastics industry? Uh, not in general, because plastics, of course, they, plastics have a place. But the wasteful, disposable plastics, killing fish, polluting oceans, God, what a, what, a, what a much better cause is this one. Uh, where would you start, though? Plastics. Well, packaging, Jeremy. Uh, packaging, absolutely right. We don't need the packaging. We didn't have the packaging. Take a paper bag. Uh, you, you don't, oh, you don't God. Yes. Oh, well, I remember you go to the grocer. When I was growing up, you went to the grocer and most everything you got was either wrapped in butcher's paper or it was wrapped in paper of one kind or another. And you took it home in your string bag or your, your brown paper bag 
We don't need the packaging. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about, perhaps we need a really good commercial to fire up people about the, the evils of uh, disposable plastics. Um, I'd like to ask you on Friday about the most effective, memorable, most memorable commercial you've ever seen. Commercials are very influential. There are a lot of them. Um, a good subject for Friday. I remember, I don't know about you Pete, but I remember that Not Happy Jan yeah, that commercial. Was a good one, yes. That but, was good. Can you think of one? Oh yes, I can. <laughs> the, the tab ad with Elle McPherson. Oh, the tab ad with my Elle McPherson. <laughs> yes, I remember the one with uh, Sikkim Rex, where yeah. the ants were climbing up. I don't know it was an ad for. I just remember the girl. Oh, I, I thought that Free for Free was quite... Uh, Free for free? Free for free, I forget. Well, I forget what they're advertising, so perhaps it wasn't uh, <laughs> free for free. Three for free, or whatever they said, yeah. Yeah, I like things go better with Coca-Cola. Things go better with Coke. Okay. Spent an awful lot of money. You know Coke invented Christmas? Christmas, the, the, the Father Christmas, the red and the green and all of that was the invention of an advertising agency uh, for Coca-Cola. I didn't know that. It's a great story make a movie about that. Uh, 2,000 building companies have gone into bankruptcy uh, or receivership. That's only in the last 12 months. I don't know what's going on there. You might like to make a comment on that on Friday. Uh, and I, I'll leave you with this. A major warning by the fire people, the fire brigade people, because they have to deal with these, these um, fires. There was another one in Melbourne on um, Sunday night. The MFS on Wednesday have issued a warning officially of the dangers of lithium ion batteries and the fires they cause. Thousands of them in all sorts of appliances, of course, are everywhere. They're endemic. Ubiquitous, I think they call it. Cars, of course. Talking about things that are disposable, these things are out there, but nobody gives any thought as to how they, sh they can be removed from the environment. When will these promoters of battery technology be brought to book? Tanya Plebisek met on Friday, I think it was, to work out what to do. A bit late, of course, 12,000 fires in the last year, and no plan for the safe disposal of batteries. Uh, I don't think that's good, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jeremy, we, we've mentioned this before, but it uh, might be worth mentioning. You know, the, the Norwegian ferry company is one mm. that won't carry battery cars. Yep. Uh, no. Underground car parks that will refuse. Yeah, and you can imagine shopping centres have got a, a lot to lose oh, yeah. if they, they find that these things are a, a present danger, and they are. Okay, happy birthday, happy wedding anniversary. I hope you're going to have a lovely day if it is a day of celebration. Ah, look at that. The toothbrush was invented in China. What did they do before toothbrushes? It was 1498. How would you ever pinpoint the date, I wonder? The early Chinese toothbrush was basically boar bristles, bristles from a pig. Hmm. 1498. According to the manuscript, a piper leads 130 children in Hamlin away, never to be seen again. The first mass child abduction, I would say. Well, that's according to legend anyway, I don't know. 1284 was the year. Elvis Presley sings in Indianapolis the last performance of his career. On this day in 1977, it's fascinating, isn't it, Pete? You never know when your last day is. No. no. I suppose if you knew, you'd give it everything you got. <laughs> we have to make every day count. We have to make every day count. I totally agree with you. Carl Benz of Germany receives a US patent for a gasoline-driven automobile. That was this day in 1894. Chris Isaac, American rock singer, songwriter, born California in 1956. 
always put Isaac on his guitar. You know that? Have you seen? He's, he's a character. Oh, yeah, he's a character. He's a fantastic character. Is he a good guitarist? Yeah, well, he is, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of his music, but no. uh, I like to see him interview. No. See mm. take over. Character. Mm. Hong Kong proclaimed the British Crown Colony in 1843. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which was the first book in the J.K. Rowling's best-selling series, published on this day in 1997. And I don't know how, how rich she is, but billions, I think I can safely say. <laughs> billions of dollars she's made. God bless her. The United Nations Charter was signed. Fifty nations in San Francisco on this day in 1945. And it has been proceeding to the left ever since. I don't know what it was like back in 1945, but it's damn useless now. Chris O'Donnell, American actor, sent of a woman and NCISLA, born in Illinois in 1970. Uh, whoops. Lightning hits gunpowder warehouse in Luxembourg. 1807. Bad luck. Oh, God, 230 people are killed. English actress, well, English-American actress, I think it's fair to say, Elizabeth Taylor's fifth divorce from Welsh actor Richard Burton. Uh, ten years marriage, but I don't know whether that's referring to their first or second marriage, because they did do it a couple of times. US President John F. Kennedy gives his famous... Ich bin ein Berliner, which he thought meant I am a Berliner. In actual fact, <laughs> it meant, <laughs> as he said it, it meant I am a donut. <laughs> in his speech in West Berlin. But he was so charismatic, they all went crazy. It didn't matter what he said. Berliner, I suppose that's Berliner as in a Berliner bun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And what else? Dennis Thatcher, first baronet, English businessman, husband of Margaret, dies at 88, 2003. Sure, American singer and actress, 1975, 28, divorces American singer, songwriter, and uh, I think he was the mayor, or was he a congressman or something? I don't know. Sonny Bono, uh, after 10 years of marriage. Uh, Melanie... Griffith weds American actor Don Johnson for the second time. Can't imagine people getting married twice. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And Kevin Rudd, from the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd era, Kevin Rudd defeats Julia Gillard in a leadership battle to become Australia, Australian Prime Minister in 2013. Some of the things for which we remember the day, I hope it's going to be a very happy one for you. Now, thank you for joining us, and I hope you might... Join us on uh, Friday when we'll sort of endeavour to have a really interesting program ready between 9 o'clock and 12 from the dining room table as we live stream, jeremycordo.com. Phone calls, guests, music, whole kit and caboodle, as they say. Thank you for viewing the Court of Public Opinion, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremy Cordo, Peter Clayton, and I'll see you with the posting and the podcasting next week. Believe in yourself, and goodbye for now. <laughs>